If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. WNST, Brandon, I am Badeja. VA, bitch. I get it. It's tough coming off a loss. I get it. But it's a 24-hour rule. Aren't we supposed to have already moved on? Well, I mean, the truth is you don't need to win every game, and I don't think anybody's won any, every game besides the 72 Dolphins. So it's one of those things you try to win every game, but realistically you're not going to win every game. So it is what it is. You know, we I'm, had a great week two weeks ago this week. Not so good, you, but we'll be back against the Rams. There were fans in Baltimore that thought you were winning every game after that. Oh, no won. question. I mean, there was there was about 53 Ravens that thought we were going to go 16-0. and 0. I kid you not. <laughs> All right, Brendan, 24 hours later, I'm going to ask you to put your analyst hat on. Break it down for us. I mean, we've tried to talk about it all day, uh, but you're the expert here. You know, what really, what transpired yesterday? I mean, you just said you can't win them all, but uh, for you, what were kind of the big keys that you guys just weren't able to accomplish yesterday? Well, you know, I think on, um, on the offense side of the ball, I, I don't have many details. I didn't watch the film, and I wasn't watching the plays because I was recovering on the sideline, but they clearly, their defense clearly beat us in that phase of the game. On special teams, we actually won that phase, and then on, um, on defense, their offense did some, some quirky things, and, and they did a good job of scheming us, but I think it just came down to third down and we didn't execute like we needed to on third down. So, um, you know, I got to give them two out of three phases that they beat us. But, um, you know, our main objective was to shut down 28. Um, we did a great job of, of, of shutting down Chris Johnson. And then uh, we didn't think Hasselbeck would be able to beat us, but I think now we think otherwise. <laughs> right. he, yeah. he played, but he played, he showed up and he played an excellent ball game. So, you know, hats go off to the Tennessee Titans. They played a great game against us. Tell me more about third down, BA, because, you know, we hear that all the time, that it's really important. It's simple. That if you get a, you stop them on third down, they're off the field. The possession's over. What happens on third down? I mean, the, the whole game was basically third and long, and um, you just got to play your techniques, you know. If there's a, if there's a defense that's called and every, every different type of defense has different techniques that you play, whether it's cover two or if it's quads, man-to-man -man, um, and whatnot, and you, you have to play those techniques because, you know, if, if ten other guys are playing those techniques and one guy isn't, then, you know, you're going to see a completion, you're going to see a first down, and um, that's basically what happened. A couple times they out-schemed us, you know, maybe two of those first downs, um, they out-schemed us, you know, just a uh, bad play ca calling, and Coach Pagano, you know, he stepped up and he said, yo, those, that's on me, guys, you know, but, you know, the other ten, you know, were on, were on us. Right. So, um, it's just one of those things. On third down, that's the money down, and, and you got to get it right on third down, and we did great on first and second down. They were in third, third and long all game, but uh, we just didn't uh, capitalize on that. What we like to do is say, well, why weren't you rushing more guys there? That's just something <laughs> well, we like to do. Well, why man. would you rush? Every every pass was just you know a, a timed route, so there was really no reason to rush. And if they were running one-man routes, it still wouldn't matter because we didn't use the right techniques to cover the one guy that they threw to. So you could have rushed 10 guys, and, and it would have made a difference. And that's the type of quarterback that Hasselbeck is. He is. He's a guy. He's going to throw it to a spot on the field. He has a clock in his head. He's going to get rid of the ball. So that's going to happen before the blitz, before the, the pressure even gets there. He throws it to a spot, and he, he trusts that his guys are going to be there, and his guys are there. The, him and his receivers were on the same page, and we just couldn't we couldn't capitalize on the third and long. So we just we didn't do the right techniques and do what we had to do. But those are our adjustments and corrections that we're, that we're making. And we already started today. We had a 30-minute walkthrough, and we addressed all those things today. Now, Brendan, for you, how big of a factor was it? Obviously, Tennessee new coaching staff. Harbaugh said in his press conference today, uh, studied a lot of tape with Chris Palmer. We know former coach of the Browns was in the UFL, uh, but said that there were some wrinkles that you guys weren't expecting. How much of a factor was it that you just didn't have a whole lot of tape on Tennessee? Um, I mean, you know, scheme is a big thing in the game, you know, so one of the things they did really well is they come in with two tights, they put their tight ends on the outside, they put the receivers on the inside, and we play big ball, so we got big linebackers, you know, we had Jared Johnson out there and Terrell Suggs or, or whoever were covering these guys, and, you know, really, you need to have the small guys inside, but what are you going to do with your outside, your big guys, you're going to put them on the outside and play corner, so, you know, those are some of the wrinkles and some of those things, you know, you get used to a team, and you know they're going to throw those things in there, so, you know, we're used to playing uh, smash mouth football, but they went out there and they kind of outsmarted us on a few things things and uh, had to go off to their scheme. They came out and schemed us and did exactly what they needed to do. They wanted Chris Johnson to, to do a lot better and to run the ball, but it really didn't matter. You know, every every play was third down and 10, third and 12, third and seven, and they converted, you know, without Chris Johnson doing anything at all. He was pretty much useless. The, the second string running back actually had a better game than him. He was the one that scored the touchdown and had a couple first downs and whatnot. I don't even think Chris Johnson, he, he might have had one first down in, in the ball game. That type of offense with the Matt Hasselbeck getting the ball out quickly and using the middle of the field and things like is there a team you can compare that to that you guys have faced and had some success against in the last couple of years? 
Well, it's a little bit like the Patriots and, and what Tom Brady does, getting get rid of the ball fast. It's definitely like Peyton Manning getting rid of the ball, but even those guys get hit. You know, we, we hit we hit uh, Tom Brady when we play them. We hit Peyton Manning. We didn't really get any hits on, uh, on Hasselbeck at all. So he was getting the ball out fast. His offensive line was protecting him pretty good. But um, it's just one of those things you can't defend a perfect throw and catch. If you if you start playing good technique and you start switching it up, now you have a chance. But the blitz wasn't going to work. But it all came down to technique. And you know, after watching the film, made the corrections. You know, maybe we could have did something at halftime. But um, you know, after the game, it's already too late. I imagine there was nothing you saw from Kenny Britt that really surprised you at all. Man, I just I couldn't believe how big and physical he was when I saw him in person. You see him on tape, it's one thing, but to see him in person, he was as big as their tight ends, and then to be able to run the way that he does. So I was actually surprised to see him as a physical specimen in person. Um, but you know, you can't. You, I just got to praise you know the Tennessee Titans the way that they came out because uh, when we played them in 08, we had a smash mouth game against them here at uh, MNC Bank Stadium. They won on like the last right. play of the game, smash mouth football. It's a close football game. Then we went there for the uh, the um, divisional. And um, we went to Tennessee, and then we beat them, got a turnover late, and won on a field goal real late as a smash mouth game. And now this game, they came out, and, and they did some things. They had some wrinkles, and they beat us uh, rather handily. So um, for a team that, you know, you, you've had some experience against their personnel and knowing what they do, even though the schemes were a little bit different, though, they came out and, and gave us a whole a mouthful of Titan that we weren't ready for. Brandon, you know, we got to deal with this. Let's just get it out of the way right now. This is Monday Night Live. We're at High Tops, WNST, Brandon I am Adejo. The word that everybody's saying that doesn't know football is the word letdown. So I'll let you, because I always say I don't, I think you guys respect your opponents too much. I think you guys know how talented they are. I get crucified on the radio all the time because I say I don't believe in things like that at the NFL level. I'll let you tell me why this was or wasn't a letdown game for the Baltimore Ravens. Well, it's kind of funny. I got some, you know, some text messages and some, some, uh, some tweets on Twitter and some emails on, on Facebook and everyone was saying like, man, how do you let a team like that beat you? You know, we prepared for them the same way we prepared for the Steelers, the same way we prepared for everybody. We had a great week of practice. They just came out and they beat us. And, and that happens sometimes, you know, there, there's 16 games, it's a tough, it's a long season and it happens, you know, it happened to the, uh, to the Patriots in in the uh, Super Bowl, sure. you know, so it, it's going to happen. It's just one of those things. We didn't play our best game, but um, I'm glad it happened now and it happened early. You know, it's kind of a for as good of a team we are. It was it was a um, a heads up. It was you know open up your eyes and and you know let's let's take advantage of the moment and do everything that we can so it doesn't happen again. So I mean, I still think we're going to have a great season. All of our goals are still the same. You don't need to go 16 and 0 to get to the Super Bowl. Um, last year, the um, Green Bay Packers, you know, they turned it on late. I think they were 10-6, barely made the playoffs, and they went and won the Super Bowl, and they won the whole thing. So, I mean, clearly, you don't need to win it all. We've gone to the playoffs at 10-6. and six. We've gone to the playoffs at 12-4. and four. So, right now, we're 1-1, one and one, but our, our record's going to be a lot better than that when it's all said and done. So, you're telling me... If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.